What's up geeks and welcome back! Ok, this collab is epic. I'm so happy that my friends Moonlight Jewel, Enchanterium, Hextian, Kiros Workshop and Mr. Super Customs decided to join artistic forces with me to create this team of 6 magical girls. So be prepared for tons of kawaii and magic and sparkles and you know, it's Sunday, just stay home and come on, this doesn't happen every day. <laughs> the link to the channel will be down below. So this is the concept art I made for this doll. Her name is Unica. And of course, her story is directly related to unicorns. I think it's very obvious as soon as you see her. I got two huge inspirations for this design. The first one is Anseya, also known as Knight of the Zodiac, which I am a huge fan. And the second one is The Last Unicorn, a movie that really marked my childhood, a masterpiece. That said, let's move on to our custom and I will keep talking more about Unica and her story as we go, you know, just to chat a little bit while I'm working. Our big team today is going to be a fail fix doll. I have a love-hate relationship with this doll line. Things, I think they're really pretty, but the marketing and display work is just terrible, like why would you want to hide this beautiful face behind an ugly mask just for gimmicky things? Stupid choice in my opinion. So I rebody her to an ever after high body because I felt the original body proportions were a little bit off and oh my god, she looks so beautiful. Now I'm going to remove this scalp, but I'm going to keep the original platinum blonde hair since it perfectly matches my concept. Once done, I'm just gonna take the original eye chips off to make her new eyes. I did that off camera because honestly it was a little bit disturbing to watch. It was a surprise for me that this doll's makeup is resistant to 100% pure acetone, so sandpaper work it has to be. And after being sanding for a while, I finally got a clean canvas. Now I'm going to make new eye sheets. Using some amazing mold putty, I made a mold of the original eye chips because I want the new eyes to have the same shape so it will be easier to insert them. Then I cast them using white polymer clay. And after fully baked, I really want to try if this experiment works. And indeed, perfectly. I think I can call this a success. Now it's time to paint the new eye chips. I'm using just regular acrylic paints for this. You can go for the style you like the most, but personally I'm going for a very animal look because, well, hello, this is a magical girl. I think they look super cute, and I was tempted to just seal them in UV resin like this, but no, this is a magical girl, and sparkles are required. So let's glit the fire them. Uh, is that a word? I want these eyes to be really sparkling and iridescent, and for that, I'm just strategically placing this jumbo hexagonal iridescent glitter flakes. I'm going to be layering them. So let's cure this first layer. I will keep adding more glitter and glitter on flakes. Oops, you know, there's never an orange sparkle. So let's seal this second layer. And once done, I'm just going to create the dome. So let's give them a final cure session. Now we're ready for the face up. And no, I didn't forget about the finished eye chips. Here they are. Oh my gosh, they look so magical and so iridescent. I just can't. I really want to build a face-up that matches these colors. I decided to go for a very unique and different type of face-up where I won't be using any dark colors at all. I really want only soft shades on her face and I will be also using white eye lines and eyebrows. I came up with this idea because, well, her name is Unique and that means unique in Spanish which, by the way, is my mother language. And it also means the same in other Romance languages. The name Unica also makes reference to the word unicorn, 
because in my story she is directly related to them. And talking about her, Unica is actually not completely a human being, but she is in fact a unicorn in human form. And now I'm going to talk about my first inspiration. The Last Unicorn is a book written by Peter Beagle and it was adapted for an animated movie in 1982. Guys, this is a complete masterpiece. This movie really marked my whole life when I watched it for the first time. I'm going to talk a little bit about it because I think I cannot spoil a movie from 1982, like come on, it's been a while. Anyway, I will try not to give you any major spoilers. I took inspiration for this character based on Lady Amalthea, which is by the way the unicorn itself turned into a beautiful woman by the magic of Smendrick the Magician. I decided I won't be giving you like too many details just in case you decide to watch the movie if you haven't yet. Well, in my story after the movie events, Lady Amalthea kept inside her that part of the human she was one, and all her descendants would be able to turn into human form when danger is near. So centuries later, Earth unicorns are facing extinction again and Unica, which is Lady Amalthea's descendant, will be the protector of the last sanctuary of unicorns in this planet. If unicorns go extinct, the last vestige of magic on Earth will disappear, so Unica can turn into human form to fight the forces of evil that want to destroy magic on Earth. Will she win? How many friends will she meet in her adventure? Well, I don't know. I would definitely watch this if this was a series, or at least some fanfic, I don't know. I hope you enjoyed this little geeky story moment we had and, you know, let me know in the comments what you think about it. What would you add? An interesting fact it is that I personally hate when unicorns are depicted just as horses with a horn. Unicorns actually should be depicted with a lion-like tail, you know, that thin tail with a bunch of hairs on the tip, like a brush. They are also way more petite and slim than horses, and you know, more like gazelles. So please, stop with the horned horses. Run over. <laughs> Just kidding. So well, here we are. This face up is almost complete, and I'm really in love with her already. She looks so soft, so ethereal. She looks like she actually belongs to a fairy tale. So now, let's try the eyes. And yes, this is the deal. I'm really, really happy. So let's give her three delashes, and I'll be using these white fakies I got from Amazon. And now we're done with the face off. Let's move on to the outfit. Once again, I will be using super light air dry clay. And once again, I will say that I got this clay from Amazon. I don't care about the brand. I just type light air dry clay on Amazon and tons of this product will pop up. And yes, they are those little colorful bags. I know I still will be asked again which clay it is and where did I get it. And I don't mind, <laughs> I will keep eternally repeating it if I have to. But please, go to Amazon and type super light air dry clay to make yourself a favor. Because this clay is really amazing and I am addicted to it. You can achieve so many incredible things with it, and this is not by any means, you know, like a promotion or anything like that. I just discovered this clay because I watch and follow lots of anime figure maker channels like Clay Snipper and Lovely For You, and they all use this clay, which I was so intrigued by in the beginning, but I ended up getting it for myself. I just thought it would be cool to fuse it with our custom dolls hobby, so here you have the result. Why any other doll artist uh, don't use this clay for customs? That I don't know, and it is beyond my comprehension. But I will keep using it because it is so easy to work with, it is so lightweight, it's just basically like paper. So I'm just building her armor. I could just easily make all these pieces removable, like I did on my previous video, Attend the Sunlight Fairy, but this time I will just keep it on the doll. 
no reason for that, I just want it like so. Because I will keep this doll as this character forever, so yes, there is no point. She will always wear this armor. My biggest inspiration for this armor is Sanseya, which is by far my all-time favorite anime, and I'm very proud of it. One of the things I love the most about Sanseya is that, despite of being an old anime, well, at least the main series it is vintage, well, it shows that really you don't necessarily need to toxic masculinity, you know, to be a hero, to be strong, and for that, I am really, really thankful. I really want to make some dolls of Sanseya in the future, I just don't know where to start because I love this series so much and I really want to make it justice. But well, getting back to the armor, I'm just working on the final touches, like some ornaments, details here and there. This skirt, I just decided it was going to be made out of thin layers of the same clay. And you know, you can always add as many details as you want. This clay is a very particular type of clay and it has its own language. So what can I say, you just need to learn it and practice of course. I ended up simplifying the helmet a little bit from the original design. And here is the armor, fully cured. As you can see the skirt keeps uh, its flexibility after fully cured, also the shoes. I have to say, it looks so cute in white. I was tempted to keep it like this, but no. I really decided to paint, so yes, let's move on to the paint job. First, I'm going to prime everything in grey color, just for the clay to absorb this first layer of paint and it will also be easier for the silver later. Once completely primed, I'm going to use my favorite silver acrylic just to paint the majority of her armor. And oh my gosh, it looks so good and it only takes one coat thanks to the grey priming. Once we have all the silver areas covered, I'm going to use my favorite gold metallic acrylic to paint all the trims and ornament details in gold. Now, all the metallic areas are covered, I'm going to use a watered down black acrylic paint as a patina to accentuate all the metallic properties of the armor. Believe me, this step is to really make a difference. It makes look all the metallic elements so realistic, you know, like it is actual metal. I'm going to paint the skirt with a deep blue color, keeping white edges. And finally, I'm going to paint the unicorn horn with a beautiful pearl color. I'm going to glue the longer parts of the skirt that I made as separate pieces. I really was considering doing this out of an iridescent fabric I have, but I decided to not add more texture to this doll and keep it accurate to my concept. And finally, it's time to put the head back on the body. Now let's close the head. For that, I'm going to use E6000. So we're almost done now, and it's finally time for some decoration. I mean, even with an armor, this is a magical girl, and rhinestones and glitter and laces are never too much. <laughs> In the very end, I decided to make her like a wand or weapon, in the beginning, I planned, you know, like her horn was going to be her main weapon, but I thought that was a little bit lame and lazy, so yeah, 
This magical girl get now her scepter and a little chill to protect herself from the forces of evil. And now we're done. So thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoy it. If so, you know, drop your comment down below, like, share and spread the word. And also and the most important, if you like my work and want to support me, please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And now go, enjoy all the other videos of this magical call-up and have a beautiful Sunday you all. Until the next time, bye!